Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how the order system works with my two assistants here, the little bear and the cow. He's a little bit mad, as you can probably hear. But uh, I will use these as models out here. I'll just position them so that the camera can see them. So I start out in the order mode. That's the only green option you have here on your mode dial on the top then you leave everything to the camera and as you can see here in the LCD, rear LCD that I have flipped out you can see now both the little bear and the little cow so if I just half press the shutter you can see that I get, first of all I got a focus confirmation beep that's default set up to uh, work like that and then you can see that it shows with green boxes where it is it has focused, in this case it was the bear and uh, that is because it is the one that is the closest to the camera. Typically the camera will choose whatever is you know, closest to the camera or has a very good contrast to the background. If I move the bear so that he sits next to the, the cow, you can see it is still the bear it focuses on and now it was the cow. So it's a little bit random here when they are almost in the same position or same distance to the camera. If I move the cow, sorry, the, if I move the bear a little bit closer again, you can see I can actually cheat it. Let's see if I, yeah. So typically it will choose whatever is the closest. So what if you still want to stay in automated mode, but you want to have control of where the camera focuses? There is a little button, I hope you can see that, a button it's not, but it's an area on the screen where if you press that one, you can see that there is a little, it looks like a, a finger pointing, right? And it has three modes. The first one is off. The second one is touch, shutter and autofocus. And the third one is just autofocus. And then it's back to off again. So it goes, it circles through these three options as you push them. If we take the second one first, that one will mean that where you point your finger on the screen, it will attempt to focus. Right, And uh, as you can see here, I can select, select the bear and I can select the cow and it will, actually, it will actually focus on these. If I then take the second option, which is to combine the focus and the shutter, what happens is where I point and then let go, then the camera will take the picture as I lift my finger from the LCD screen. So if I want to take a picture of the, the cow here, I point to the cow, I can move my finger to see uh, what I have focused on, and then I can release, and then it will take the picture. And that's quite fun. So if you come from a smartphone where you're used to just pointing and, and taking pictures, this is a, a good way of, of, of working. Yep. And then the third option is of course off, uh, where it doesn't do anything. If you're new to photography, my guess is that very often what you will be taking picture of, especially in the beginning, is friends and family and pets. That's at least how I started out. And there actually is, if you have operated the software, I will talk about that a little bit later in the video, but if you have upgraded the software to version 2, then uh, the camera can actually recognize both eyes and pets. What you can do is you can take it to the scene uh, option here, instead of being in auto mode, you can take scene SCN and in that mode you choose between different scenes, as it's called, where you tell the camera what it is you're shooting and basically you select that by turning the rare command dial and you can see the options flickering here. So let's see, I can choose a lot of things here, party, indoor, night landscape, night portrait, close up, sports, child, landscape, portrait. Let's try that one. And then let me see if I just take here a picture of my daughter from a few years back and then just put that in front of the camera and let's see what happens. As you can see here on the screen, it finds my daughter's eye and it only of course finds one of them. But if you want to switch between one of the two eyes, you can use the rare command dial that sits here. Uh, it's the, the sort of the buttons you have around the OK button here and you can jump between switching between the left and the right eye. And if you just 
You can see here now I have a green focus confirmation. If I just press the shutter, then I have taken a picture of my daughter. If I move the picture around, you can see it actually manages to keep track. And if I want to shift to the other eye, you can see that it works really, really well. So definitely give the scenes mode a, a try if I'm sure it will give you sharp images. So what if you want to take a picture of your pet instead? Well, it's the same thing. You just, in the scenes mode here, have to select that one on the main dial, or sorry, the mode dial here. You just twist the rare command dial, pet, pet portrait. Let's see what, how that does. Can that recognize anything when it's my daughter? Well, it almost could, but it's, it flicks a little bit back and forth. Let's take a picture. I have a not very good picture here, quality-wise, that is, of my cat. And just put that in front of the camera. And as you can see, it absolutely recognizes the, the face of my cat. And you can see it has now focused on the right eye. And I can, again, switch between these two and take a picture. And again, from experience, I can tell you this works really, really well. So if you are in a situation where pets and friends and family are what you shoot the most, definitely give the scenes mode a try. And uh, you can also try some of the other options that were there. Beach snow, maybe not so much. Dusk dawn, pet portrait, candlelight, blossom. There's a lot of options here. But definitely give that a try. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, it also works in child mode. Uh, you can see in the top left of the screen here, uh, it shows what mode you're in, what scenes mode you're in. So give that a try. Uh, my experience, as I said, is that it works really, really well. If you cannot get the pet recognition to work or you find that the, the software to recognize the eyes is not uh, working super well, it could be related to the fact that you haven't got the latest firmware version. And uh, you can check the firmware and you can check the firmware version here. If you go to the setup menu, that's the one, two, three, four, five, the fifth from the top setup menu, and you just go to the bottom, the very bottom of the list. There are many pages here, but go to the very bottom. There is a firmware version, and here you can see the camera uh, version here is 203. If you have a version that's lower than that, or is perhaps version number one, it's probably the reason why it doesn't work so well. So what you need to do is to head over to an icon's homepage, download a little piece of software that you then put in the root of your uh, SD drive. Um, it's not complicated, the process. You just take your SD drive, put the file in the root, and then you sort of reinsert the, the SD card and restart your camera. And what will happen then is that exactly the same place as you go in here to see the firmware version, all of a sudden there will be an, op an option to operate your software and you just execute that and then you're good. If that option is grayed out, it's probably because your camera hasn't got enough battery power. So go and charge the battery and come back again and I'm sure then the gray bar will be uh, solid. Also, make sure when you do the upgrade, don't touch the camera. And I really underline this as an important point. Don't touch the camera. Leave the camera be while it's working. If you interrupt the camera in the firmware upgrade, you run the risk that you leave the camera in an undefined state. You don't want that. Believe me, you don't want that. So upgrade the firmware uh, exactly as Nikon instructs you to do it on their homepage. Make sure you leave the camera alone, and uh, once you have, once it's done, uh, you can sort of use the, the the camera right after you have done the upgrade. There's no magic or, or anything else. It's pretty straightforward process. But remember two things: charge the battery so you have plenty of power so you can select the option, and make sure you leave the camera alone. If you follow those two, I'm sure you will be good in terms of the firmware up upgrade. If you have a subject that's moving back and forth, like a tennis player for instance, then there is a little feature here that I want to show you, where if you push the OK button in, in the auto mode here, 
If you push the OK button, you can see a little white square appears, and you can move that around as you see fit using what I call the arrows, but it actually is the command wheel, the four dimensions that's given around the OK button, right? So let's say I want to focus on the cow here, then I push OK again. You can see here that it actually manages to keep track of it. This is useful for, say, tennis players or you know, anything that moves around in your circle, in, your, in a circle in your frame, uh, then you can use this feature. I must admit, <laughs> I seldom use it, but I think it's quite fun to play with. And maybe if you, you know, uh, record a game where it's people moving in, in predictable patterns, like my favorite example is the tennis player, then I think this works uh, really well. So take note of that feature, press OK to move the focus point around and then OK again to, to select what it is you want it to keep track of. So if we go back to auto mode, I just want to show you, you can do a manual override of whatever the camera has chosen to focus on. You can see here it has chosen to focus on the bear naturally in the foreground and uh, I have now half pressed the shutter. While I do that, you can always turn the focus ring that is the ring the closest to you. There are two rings. One is uh, the zoom ring, and then there is the focus ring. If you see, if I turn that one, I can move the focus peak highlights so that now it is the cow that is in focus, and now it is the bear that is in focus. So if I want the cow to be in focus, I can just, just grab the ring and change the focus. And then I hit the shutter, and I got a picture where the cow was in focus. That you can always do. If you noticed just before, there were some yellow dots that showed where uh, the image was in focus. And you can set that up as an option here in the custom settings menu. Some also call that the pencil menu is the fourth from the top, right? If you go into this one and take number D as delta, you come into the shooting display, and there is a lot of options here. Uh, but if you go to D9, it's called peaking highlights, and here you can select what level you want. I've chosen high sensitivity, meaning that it's, you know, it's it's a very strong uh, indication of where the focus is. And you can also choose the color: red, yellow, blue, white, to your liking. Let's just take blue again, and then we can go out. Did I select that actually? Yeah, I did. So out again, and. Uh, we are now ready to, to focus, and that helps you if you want to take charge, as I just showed you. Uh, again, it focuses on the beer. While I hold down the, the shutter, I can just now move the focus to be on the cow. I'm not sure you can see that so clearly now, because now it's no longer yellow. It's actually, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's set blue, but I think it's more purple, if to be quite honest, and then I can take a picture. Another thing you can do is you can always zoom in using the, uh, the plus and the minus here, and you can walk around with the OK button here. So if, for instance, I wanted to take a picture where I wanted the cow to be in focus, I can always, you know, zoom in like this and then see using the, both the, maybe the manual override and the focus peaking points here to see if I have obtained exactly the focus I want. So play around a little bit with this. Uh, you can get even closer. You can see I can get crazy close like, like this. And you can see now I'm absolutely sure I have the focus that I want. And then I take the picture and back out again. So that's really nice. Remember that, half press the shutter. You can override with the, with the, the focus ring and you can always zoom in uh, using the plus and the minus signs here on the right hand side of your, of your screen. If you have different options for what display you actually have here, sometimes it can be a little annoying, especially when you do the point and uh, where, you, where you select the focus area pointing to the screen. You can see here you have different versions of the screen and especially where you have the, uh, the histogram here, it can be a little bit <laughs> annoying to have the histogram all of a sudden here if you want to focus there. But just hit the, 
display options until you get an option that is uh, to your liking. You can have more or less information as you can see here. But just hit that button until you get something that you like. It sort of again goes in circle between the different options. So just hit it until you get what you want, basically. Now if you come from the good old DSLR world and think that these focus points, that's a strange thing you want your good old focus system from the DSLR. In the bottom left, if you see here, if I then start to grab the focus ring, you can see here, down here, bottom left, you have your good old arrows with the circle that gives you the confirmation that you have to obtain focus, right? And th if this is new to you, I can just tell you that the circle in the middle means that you have obtained focus. If the arrow points to the right, like it does now, that means if you imagine you have a little dot on top of your focus ring, you then need to move that dot in the same direction as the arrow is saying, right, in order to get to focus. So that's what I'm doing right now, ever so slowly. And boom, there you have focus. On the other hand, if it's the, if it's the other way around, where the arrow is pointing that way, again, same logic. Imagine there's a little dot sitting on top of your focus ring and you need to move that dot in the same direction as the arrow is indicating. So I'm moving it back again and there you have focus. Right? So that's, if you're not, if you don't like these focus points or you simply want to use it the way you, you have from your DSLRs, this is for you. So let's talk about taking more control, meaning that you make more decisions and the camera makes less decisions, right? Let's start with this one, the order area, uh, because that is the most complicated. Uh, so when we are through that one, then I'm sure you will see the other two are, are quickly done. Make sure that you are in one of the semi-automatic mode, because you cannot really do the selections when you're in auto mode. I normally shoot either in aperture priority or shutter priority, meaning that here I control the aperture, here I control the shutter speed, or if you're brave, you can go directly into full manual mode here when it comes to exposure. But I'm usually here in aperture priority, and let me just show you how it works if I go into uh, this menu here and show you what there are of options. You can see there are one, two, three, four, five options, and pinpoint is the first one, and that's where you, you Pinpoint, as the name says, a specific area where you want the camera to be in focus. The single point the autofocus is a little bit the same, but the camera looks for focus points just outside the point the, you have defined. So if one of those areas is a little bit better than the one you have selected, it will pick the one of the surrounding uh, uh, points. Wide area, uh, large and small. That is that you move a box around where you tell the camera to take focus within that box, but it's you who decide what, uh, where the, the box is. And as the name said, small and large, that is the size of the box. I will show you that shortly. And then you have the auto area, auto focus. That is the one where you basically leave the, it up to the camera to decide where to focus. So let's give these a try. I start out with the pinpoint. And then let's just flip out the screen here and look at our little model here. So if I now show you here, I can see I have a little red box I can move around. And that is the pinpoint. So if I want to focus on the on the nose of the of the of the cow, I can do it like that. I can move that around using the the cursor here, if I can call it like that, the, the control wheel. I just half hit the shutter and then take the picture. So that's full control. This is really good if you want to take pictures of something that's very, very stable. So uh, use that for architecture, for, for instance, that's the, the classic example. Next one is, if we take the pinpoint, we go to the single point autofocus. It works a little bit the same, but you'll see the box is a little bit bigger. And that's because the camera now picks the best point in that area, that region that you are now moving around here. So if I want to take, say, the eye of the of the bear here, I can do it like that, boom, and then take a picture. 
So a little bit the same principle as the pinpoint, but the error is a little bit larger and it tries to find the best point in that area. Speaking of area, if we go to wide, you will see here now, I have a very large box now <clears throat> that I can move around. The good thing about this is that it's me who decides where the box is, but it's not me who decides what it chooses to focus on within that box. So you can see the more we move up these, these options, you can see that you lose more and more control because I am in control of where I put the box, but I'm not in control of what it chooses to focus on within that box. So let's take the next option here. Uh, that is the white one. So you can see now I've chosen the white one. It's a little bit bigger. And again, I can make sure it's the bear it focuses on, but I cannot really control which part of the bear now is it focuses on. So again, uh, maybe more easy to use, but also a little bit less control. Finally, you have the, the full Monty, so to speak, where the camera decides everything. This is the one you also know from the older mode. The camera decides everything. So those are the area options. If we move to the focus mode, you can see here that there are manual focus to the right. That's easy to guess, right? Then you have continuous autofocus. That means that the camera, even though you have half pressed the shutter, while you do that, the camera continuously tries to focus. If I choose autofocus continuous, you will see that the camera continuously tries to focus. And if I move the bear here, you can see that it adjusts the focus continuously. And if I take the bear away, it tries, and you can see in this case, it tries to focus on the table. If I tilt it a little bit backwards, you can see now it's the cow, right? And if I put the bear back again, you can see it continuously tries to focus. This is great if either the camera moves or your subject moves. Typically, if you're shooting wildlife or uh, football players or whatever, then this is a really good way of, of doing it. But it continuously tries to focus. This is contrary to the alternative, which is single. And here, the camera only focuses once. If you move the subject, right, the focus stays the same. I can move the subject over here and, or in here, and it will clearly be out of focus. So this is only good in combination with, with things that are pretty static, where you're absolutely sure you're not going to move the camera or your subject is not going to move. Then there is the autofocus mode auto switch. It basically chooses between single and continuous. So this is not a new mode. It's just you leave the camera to decide which of these two that is the best for you. And then finally, there is manual focus where you basically have to turn the ring in order to obtain focus. Finally, I want to talk about the release mode. It's, it's typically not considered part of the focus system, but it does influence whether you come home with, with good pictures or not. <laughs> so single is that you every time you, you take a picture or push the shutter, only one picture is taken. As soon as you go into uh, either low, high or very high, if I can call it like that, then, let me just show you, if I take continuous low, then uh, the camera will shoot a series of pictures, right? So this is good if you want to shoot something that is moving and you want to capture, uh, you're not sure exactly which time is the optimal, then you can, you can choose between different options. And I can assure you, you can fill your memory card very, very fast, especially if you go to high. So choose this if you're shooting, for instance, wildlife, birds that are passing by or cars passing by quickly in combination with continuous uh, autofocus. So there's a little bit confusing that they're two times con con continuous, but one is the release mode and the other is the focus. So combine these two for things that are moving really, really fast. So that was actually it. I just, towards the end here, want to show you uh, how you can configure the setup so that you can access, instead of going into uh, the, the menu that I showed you here by pressing the information button where you get to the menu and then you can go in and then you can select. You actually, by default, the camera is set up. So one of the two function buttons here on the front, the function two, if you press that one, 
Uh, you can on the rare command line switch between manual focus, uh, AFS and AFC, and then AFA. That was the options I just showed you, right? You can also, if you turn the front command dial, choose between the different, maybe that's difficult to see, but the different options for which area it is that it focuses on. Pinpoint, uh, single point, wide, uh, wide large, and uh, the full plate. So you can actually just by pushing F2 here and turning the front and the rear command dial, control the, the focus system. If you also want to control the, 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 this is the default setting by the camera, I believe. So just push in the F2 button and then turn the, the front and rear command dial and it should work. But you can also control the drive mode, uh, setting up F1 for that. And this is not a factory setting. So I want to show you how you can, how you can actually do that. You head into the custom settings menu. There's also so someone who calls that the pension menu and go to F for controls. And then here on the second one, F2, if you go into that one, you get a little image or picture that looks like the camera. And here you can walk around many different buttons here on the camera and see what options you have for configuring different buttons. But I want to configure F1. And as you can see, both the graphic and the text shows me here what it is I'm doing. And in here, I have selected release mode as my option. This is not the factory setting. This is something I have selected. And if I just show you how many options there are, it's crazy many options. So you have to go, I think, four pages down in order to find release mode. And then uh, you can select it here. And then it brings that value back and shows you a little graphic here in yellow uh, that corresponds to that now this button is configured to be the release mode. It actually also write it here in, in clear text. So if I say OK to that and then go back to uh, my F2 and press that one, you can see now I'm pressing F2 and uh, it shows me the option for release mode. And if I turn the rare command dial, I can select the release mode that I want. So this is neat if you want to quickly change between different release modes along with the configuration of your focus system. Yep. That's it. I hope this was useful. Uh, I have talked you through the most options in the uh, autofocus system of this uh, wonderful little camera. I have not told you everything because that was not my ambition. I wanted to give you a driver's license so you can go and play with the different options yourself and find out what works the best for you. If you have any questions, of course, more than welcome to drop them in the comment section. I'm happy to see if I can help you. Otherwise, I will refer you to the Nikon manuals. I think they are actually excellent. They do not give a very good overview <laughs> because they're very detailed. But if you're looking for a very specific answer to a very specific question, I find them to be very useful. And there also are some, some very useful illustrations. So you can also give that a try. But if that fails, feel free to drop me a comment. And as always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.